So you're watching this video if you've got a DPF, a diesel particulate filter. In. The easiest way of telling if you've got a DPF in is just to note the warning lights that come up on the dashboard when you turn the engine on. And if there's a symbol there for a DPF, chances are you're going to have a DPF filter. Older diesel engines didn't tend to have them. And as emissions regulations were tightened up, the diesel particulate filters started to be fitted to most models of car. In some brands of car, the DPF was only fitted to the higher performance models to get those emissions levels down um, and in other brands they were just fitted across the board to every model but in this video we're going to look at ways of cleaning your DPF particularly if you get that little warning light coming up on the dashboard indicating that you need to regenerate or re-clean or run a clean cycle on that DPF So we're going to look at some easy methods of doing this, some general driving habits that can probably avoid you having to go through this process anyway. We're going to look at some of the problem areas that cause those DPF to prematurely fail and die. And we're going to look at methods of actually keeping them in good condition so you can go much further than probably what the manufacturer intended. And we're going to look at regeneration where it's forced rather than something you do as you drive. So the methods of doing this is somewhat different from model to model, but we're going to try and cover every single model out there and give you advice that applies to your car but always consult with your manual and just make sure that the techniques you're trying is in accordance with your manufacturer's instructions because there are still a few differences out there and we've seen some videos on YouTube that just recommend driving at really high RPMs at really full throttle positions and those situations don't usually work too well on most engines and they might even cause problems particularly if your DPF is starting to get blocked up. So at the end as well we're going to mention a, a warning really that a lot of people make a mistake when it comes to choosing additives to add to your diesel in order to clean your DPF. There are certain additives that you should use at certain times and there are additives that you really want to avoid at certain conditions when your DPF is starting to become blocked and the engine is running its own regeneration cycle on it. So firstly what is the DPF? Well I've done another video that explains DPFs in great detail but think of it as just a filter that collects the unburnt sooty particles from the engine engine and collects those so they can be burnt off and they become much much finer and less hazardous to people's health apparently. So what happens over time is the DPF becomes clogged up with soot and that severely restricts the flow through the exhaust and can cause catastrophic problems in the engine if it's not addressed. So most people driving along will generally have some kind of warning sign flashing up on the dashboard. Now if you're keeping an eye on your fuel economy and the car's performance you will probably notice a tailing off in performance as that filter is starting to clog up. So your typical lifespan of a filter is about about 125,000 miles. So the key to a long DPF life is to make sure the engine is operating at warmer temperatures, it's not producing great amounts of soot, and the DPF itself is getting time to burn off the bits of soot that have started to collect within it. So avoid driving the engine while it's cold, avoid those short journeys, those five and ten minute journeys really are killing that DPF filter, it's just causing soot to block up. When your engine first starts up it's not very efficient, it's going to be producing a lot more soot than normal, it's also not going to be warming up that DPF enough to start burning off those particles. You're going to have a situation where that DPF filter is just going to get more and more blocked up. So whenever you look to run a cleaning cycle on your DPF you must make sure the engine is warm. You certainly don't want to be running the engine inefficiently and pushing a lot of soot through. You want to make sure the DPF is already warm and you're just pushing the heat into the DPF in order to get it to burn off those little soot particles. So in most engines this is something that should happen as you drive the car normally. So you need to maintain a speed of about 1,500 to 3,000 RPMs. It varies a little bit from car to car just because they've got different operating ranges and you're putting different loads through them. But generally speeds of about 40 miles an hour upwards, you're not looking at full throttle inputs, you're looking at the RPMs and you really want to get the temperature up. So you'll probably use a slightly lower gear than maybe you would otherwise. But a long run on a highway, freeway or motorway is you 
usually enough as long as it's got about 20 to 30 minutes in order to burn off all of those soot particles that have built up within it. If you make a point of doing that regularly, once a week, a few times a month, you'll go a long way to reducing the need to ever deal with a major problem in your DPF. So when that warning light comes up on the dashboard, that's really time to start making sure that you avoid those short journeys and you're getting a bit of heat into the engine and that DPF is working optimally and starting to burn off those carbon particles that are building up inside it. If you ignore that, that DPF is going to become more and more clogged. And the more clogged it is, the harder it is to clean it. So you'll get to a point where the only way you can deal with a problem in your filter is going to a garage and getting it properly removed and professionally cleaned. And that's quite expensive. And in a lot of cases that will actually require replacement of the DPF because you've let things go too far. And that's not really taken into account the damage that you're potentially doing to your engine because it's really struggling to push the exhaust gases out of the engine and that can have a knock-on effect to the overall efficiency and longevity of your engine. So we're going to talk now about the forced regeneration. Now this is a cycle that the computer in the engine actually manages itself. So with some cars it will just go into a regeneration cycle as you're driving it. You'll get some sort of message up on the dashboard and it'll just be maintaining those temperatures. In some cars you, there may be a problem and preventing it from being done automatically. So if that's the case, you may need some sort of diagnostic tool plugged into the OBD2 port, which will firstly allow you to diagnose any potential problems with the engine. You'll be looking for error codes and problems. And in most cases, that will tell you the state of the DPF. And there's usually an option that will trigger that regeneration cycle. So having a right diagnostic tool can really pay dividends. They're not that expensive. Even the simple ones often allow you to go in and initiate this regeneration cycle. So we're going to talk now about additives. Now choosing the wrong additive can cause damage to your DPF. Two categories of additive that you will put in your fuel to clean your DPF. The first is a DPF cleaner or blockage remover. Now that's designed not to raise the temperature of the exhaust gases. It attaches itself to the soot particles and allows them to burn off at a lower temperature. So that's generally safe for partially blocked DPFs and for cars that have gone into some sort of regeneration cycle, but you're just struggling to push it through and that regeneration cycle is being forced on you at regular intervals, which might indicate that the DPF is not working optimally or it's not fully clearing after that cycle. So those additives can be very, very useful. The key thing is that they don't raise the temperature because what happens is if your car goes into a regeneration cycle, it will raise the temperature. So you're often talking about temperatures exceeding 700 degrees, which is quite hot. And if you've already raised the temperature with an additive and the car's going into its cycle, and raising the temperature, that can go beyond the design constraints of the DPF and you can actually start to melt the internal components and causes all sorts of problems within the exhaust system and also can damage the engine in some instances. So you just need to be careful. So the other additive, is a DPF regenerator or a maintenance additive that can be put into the fuel tank. Now this does raise the exhaust temperature. It's useful to have that in the car all the time just to maintain a nice clean DPF. I say all the time, you don't need it in there all the time, but you need to be regularly using it. So if your DPF regeneration is happening, say once every three months, then maybe once a month, make sure you've got a tank that goes through with this regeneration DPF cleaner in it that will raise those exhaust temperatures. And that's particularly useful if you're doing a lot of short journeys. So that's a good idea to keep your DPF clean, but not a good idea if it's already blocked and you're starting to get problems with the regeneration cycles. So just make sure you understand what you're buying. Read the labels carefully, read the manufacturer's instructions carefully, and be very, very careful. You certainly wouldn't want to end up killing your DPF and having to go out and buy a new one for your engine. Always make sure that those additives are correctly topped up and in line with the manufacturer's instructions. Please also read your instructions from the manufacturer as to how many RPMs you should be driving and at what speeds, because it's critical to do that correctly for your engine and for your engine's design in order for that regeneration cycle to kick off. Some of the problems that may be preventing that regeneration cycle can be errors in the engine. So getting that diagnostic code read off the ECU can give you a list of potential problems. So if there's an issue with the fuel delivery system or some other aspect of the engine, it's not going to go into that cleaning cycle. Another silly thing that can prevent the engine going into a cleaning cycle is insufficient 
efficient fuel. So with some cars, you need 10 or 20 litres of fuel in. Some you need a third of a tank or half a tank. But it needs to make sure you've got sufficient fuel to complete that cleaning process. So the idea there is it's not something you can start and then finish another day. You've got to go through the whole regeneration process. So the key takeaway from this video really is to look at the RPMs while you're driving. It's not the throttle position. It's not the speed of the car. You want to maintain a fairly steady RPM range that will raise the engine's temperature and not put too much pressure on what is potentially a partially blocked DPF. Field. Going with really high revs can actually cause damage. You're putting too much pressure into the exhaust system and it may just push things too far and you'll have other problems to deal with. Certainly go for a spirited drive at regular intervals through your week and you'll just maintain that DPF and hopefully it'll never really require a proper regeneration cycle. You'll be maintaining it at those correct levels because it will be working effectively as it was originally designed. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Other questions people ask is should I remove the DPF because it, it sounds like a real pain. So I've got another video lined up for you that deals with DPF and whether they should be removed or not. We also look at other diesel topics. So check out the videos that we've got in our diesel section because it's going to flag up lots of recommendations and tips that you can use to get the most out of your diesel engine. Please subscribe if you haven't done so because we would love you to stay tuned and thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because it helps us to get out there and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.